Greetings, everyone, and welcome to episode 10 of the Virtual Office Hours. This is our spring 2016 edition. Abby Blakeney, as usual, behind the camera as our producer. Uh, we are continuing our conversation here uh, on the question of was America founded as a Christian nation, a historical introduction, the title of my book. It will be coming out in a revised edition in the fall, so uh, we thought we'd revisit some of these topics. Here in the last several weeks of the office hours for the spring 2016, we are talking about the religious faith of the founding fathers. And last week we began talking about George Washington, thus we have the Washington bobblehead and the Washington as dispenser with us today. The rest of the Founding Fathers, you can see them over my shoulder. They're sort of hanging back. They're not taking center stage today. They'll each get their turn, or at least most of them will get their turn over the course of the next couple weeks. Last week, we talked a little bit about Washington's religious faith uh, and some of the uh, beliefs that he had. This week, we want to talk about a uh, famous painting of George Washington uh, that occurred in various that very, has occurred at various different times over the 19th and 20th century. At least it's, be, it's been painted several times, and that is the story of him praying in the snow. Uh, while he's leading the American forces at Valley Forge. I just spent a month at Mount Vernon, as some of you know, and every day I would wander down to the visitor center from the library there and get my coffee. And while you're walking through the gift shop, these images or these paintings of Washington kneeling in the snow at Valley Forge or kneeling in the snow at Valley Forge beside his, beside his horse, uh, they're really all over the place. And they, they must sell very, very well. They sell at very high prices, and apparently people buy these paintings. And Mount Vernon makes a lot of money uh, on these paintings. Uh, you know, I love Mount Vernon, and I love my time there. But, you know, let's try to examine this event that's been captured in the these paintings. Let's try to examine this event uh, historically. Now remember, it's, uh, this painting, this, this prayer, if you will, takes place in the winter of 1777-78. The Continental Army is facing one of its lowest points in the Revolutionary War. Uh, British soldiers under uh, General William Howe, they're in control of Philadelphia. Washington and his troops have just come off major defeats uh, at Brandywine and Germantown. And Washington has taken his army to Valley Forge, Pennsylvania, which is about 18 miles northwest of Philadelphia. Here they're going to heal their wounds, they're going to prepare for the spring campaign. Now, the conditions at Valley Forge, as most elementary school students know, were not good. The army lacked the basic necessities of life. It was cold. Washington, you know, was struggling to keep the army together. Um, and as the army struggled through this Valley Forge winter, there was a local man named Isaac Potts. He was the owner of the house where Washington was staying. And according to the story, Potts walks through the woods near the encamp encampment, I should say, where the British or American soldiers are settled, and he hears this voice amid a bower of oak trees. Now he realizes quickly that this is Washington's voice that he hears and Potts, as the story goes, is a Quaker. Now of course, as many of you know, Quakers uh, are opposed to war, but nevertheless Potts is moved by the fact that this general is actually uh, praying. And when he sees Washington in prayer, he runs back home, according to the story. He tells his wife, Sarah, something along, along the lines of, you know, this day I've, you know, I've seen, you know, what I've never thought I'd see before. Again, I'm paraphrasing here. Um, there in the snow, you know, was George Washington praying. He is a Christian. And uh, as the story goes, Potts, who is a Quaker, who is supposedly neutral or leaning towards the British during the war, uh, becomes a patriot and supports the American cause. Uh, that's at least the story that you often hear behind uh, these paintings of Washington praying in Valley Forge. Uh, and this, paint, this story made it into 19th century school textbooks, McGuffey's famous readers. In 1866, a man named Henry Bruckner uh, recaptured this event in a painting called The Prayer at Valley Forge. And it portrays Washington again on his knees in the snow, praying to God, uh, again, supposedly on behalf of his army uh, and the American cause. Uh, this story then, you know, this painting then later would appear in uh, the famous Washington Memorial Chapel in Valley Forge. It, it's going to appear on a U.S. postage stamp in the 1920s. There's one, though, major problem with Potts' story of Washington praying at Valley Forge, and that is it probably didn't happen. 
Now, in the 20th century, there's another uh, artist named Freeberg who captures this story as well. Um, but what's most likely the case is that um, Washington would have certainly prayed at Valley Forge. We know he was a man of prayer. He took prayer seriously. Uh, but whether or not he prayed in this specific moment, that is sort of up for debate. And the reason why it's up for debate uh, is that Potts uh, owned that house that Washington stayed at at Valley Forge, but it really uh, was, it belonged to, uh, at the time I should say that Washington was there, his aunt, Deborah Potts Hughes was actually living there. So, so Isaac Potts wasn't even there. Uh, his aunt was living there. And indeed, Potts was probably never even residing anywhere near Valley Forge during the, encamp the encampment. The story goes he met his wife Sarah, but at the time of the encampment, he wasn't married. He wouldn't get married till Sa to Sarah until much later, actually 25 years later. Um, so there's all kinds of problems, uh, if you will, with this story. Uh, I elaborate them a little bit more in the book, but it's a story of how um, certain things are remembered. And when you want George Washington to serve as a kind of righteous leader of a Christian nation, uh, these stories are going to be very, very important to you. This story was first actually relayed by Parson Weems, Mason Locke Weems, the Anglican itinerant minister and bookseller who wrote a life of Washington. By the way, this is the same guy who talked about the story of Washington chopping down the cherry tree. Right? So, so it's interesting how these kind of myths get into the accounts. Now it's also worth saying here, as we're talking about Washington's religion, it's also worth saying, as I said a few minutes ago, that Washington indeed was a person of prayer. I'm sure he would have prayed at Mount Vernon, uh, but whether or not he actually prayed in the snow and the Isaac Potts story um, is true, you know, that's a completely different matter. I think the painting, uh, the various paintings, bring a certain amount of inspiration, but at the same time, uh, they represent uh, a kind of much more of a myth than reality. So I hope I didn't uh, burst too many of your historical bubbles uh, with this episode, but um, there you have it, Valley Forge's pr George Washington's prayer at Valley Forge. We'll see you next time on the Virtual Office Hours.